I'm here on behalf of National Federation of Indian Women and of course on behalf of all the struggling women of the country to express my solidarity with your movement and also <coughs> to condemn this autocratic vice chancellor who has been autocratic not is not being recently but for the last 18 months something or the other I think have been happening here. I won't explain about the GS cash right now. I think Mariam you will be able to explain why it's an assault on women as such. My point here is something different. This assault on GS cash is not an isolated incident. It's not an isolated issue at all. It's part of the larger agenda, part of the larger game, what we have been watching for the last three years. In JNU itself, not only for the last 18 months, even before we have seen the type of things happening, protests, calling, if, if, if any voice of dissent being grounded as anti-nationalist, etc. But the question is, why they are targeting JNU of all the universities? Because JNU has a tradition, JNU has a heritage, and JNU provides minds of intellectual minds who can question, who can oppose, who can protest. And this government, all of you know, naturally for them, intellectuals are the greatest threat. I don't have to mention the recent happenings for the last three years. It's worse than declared emergency. It's an undeclared emergency and we really don't know, at least at that time it was lifted. Now we really don't know when this emergency will be lifted or at all what would happen or are we going into a dark tunnel at all. Hope, hopefully not, I'm not so pessimistic. The point I like to make that GS Cash, the attack, first and foremost, attack on the autonomy hello. of a body. Hello, hello. Attack. attack on the nature of the institution because I have worked with the GS Cash people, they keep confidentiality, there is total impartiality and also I must say that it's not being nominated, that's the most important part, by a hierarchical system. It's an popularly constituted body, elected representatives are there. And I think that's the reason why GS Cash is under attack, one of the reasons. So the very nature of the attack shows, one by one, they want to silence the voices of democratic protest, democratic rights, right uh, voices of dissent. You have seen for the last three years so many people, even the 82 years old Comrade Bansal, 72 years old Kalpurki, means what I mean age is no factor for them, and a woman for the first time, Gauri Lankesh, they were being silenced because of their voices of dissent. I won't take much time because all of you are learned people. You know what is happening in the country. But I am alarmed because there is no opposition to fight. In JNU, I congratulate the teachers and the students to raise their voices against this disbanding of GS Cash. I congratulate the petitioners who rightly filed the petition within a very short notice. 
these are some of the uh, shining areas, I mean, sort of areas of hope. But on the whole, I have told you, the JNU assault is not an isolated assault. Therefore, therefore, you intellectuals who make intellectuals, who make or you can say you prepare those kind of minds who can question whatever happening, for them it's a threat. We have to fight an ideology. It's not just a question of somebody, for example, last year, whatever happened in JNU, or earlier also, occupying UGC, all those campaign. These were incidents. But basically, now, in the last three years, the ideology of RSS, of majoritarianism, a kind of fascism, authoritarianism, which you are visualizing here. Your vice chancellor is just a puppet in the hands of those people. He is just a servant, I would say, of the government. So our target should be to fight that ideology which is, which was the ideology which not only assassinated Gandhi, but all these people, I'm particularly mentioning Gandhi, because at that time, that ideology was not so rampant. Now it is virulent through social media, because it's being endorsed by a government, central government, with power and distortion of history, etc., etc. Therefore, I won't take much time. If we have to really launch an ideological battle, what is needed is an united struggle. United in ideas, in spirit, in everything. And here I categorically like to make a point. Today, there is no reason why there should be not a dividing line, one line. One side, RSS, majoritarian, fascistic ideology, patriarchal, manuvar, etc. I don't have to explain. And on the other side, anti-RSS ideology. We have to rise above our interest of small groups, small parties, small affiliations, and make a broad front. That is the need of the hour. Unless we have a broad, united front, it's very difficult to say, uh, to, uh, to do it, it is easier to say, but unless we don't build up that kind of a front, broad, wide, our movement cannot be strong. We don't want to confine the movement in JNU. JNU should take the lead in the country. Earlier also it has taken. Therefore, my appeal is to have a broad front of united struggle so that we can fight not just a central government, or a particular state government, or just an university authority, uh, uh, administration, but an ideology which has spread throughout the country. My recent experience in traveling in a train in a three-tire uh, tire, uh, compartment, I was going to Madhya Pradesh. It was so scary. I was surrounded by 12 and more than 12 young and old people who told me categorically that you may have taught history, but you don't know anything about history. You are a liar. All these young boys, they know much better history. And at one point, I'm amazed to say, 
And I, I, I can't believe, some of them told me, you know, actually, Nehru made a conspiracy to assassinate Gandhi. For the first time I heard it. Then when I shared this experience, then somebody said, yes, it is very much in the social media going on. So it's a regime of, you know, false kind of history and jhoot, just go whatever you, be, you can say. Therefore, I really don't know. In this kind of a situation, it reminds me of Germany. And I hope we don't make the mistake what happened in Germany on the eve of the rise of Hitler. So I'm not going into details about the GS cash. There are other speakers. For me, always we will support the movement. We have been supporting, but now it's high time to have a greater struggle in the country, a broad united from whatever way. And always I have seen earlier, we read in history, intellectuals play a very important role. So please take that responsibility and give us a guidance and lead the country and fight this ideology which has assassinated not just Gauri Lankesh and all those people, but even Junaid, Pehlu Khan, Akla, the ordinary people are affected in this undeclared emergency, which is not there so much in the declared emergency. Therefore, with these words, I will hand over to my other speakers. And again, I appeal to you, now this is the time to come out of the interest of one's party group or interest, individual interest and look beyond that and save the Republic, Indian Secular Democratic Republic. With these words, I end my speech.